Morning. Um, let's have a look at uh, Keir Starmer explaining why he thought he had to remove the statue. Oh, sorry, this is Tony Blair. My apologies. Um, we haven't got to Tony Blair yet. Um, We've people are trying to confuse me this morning. What are, were younger, usually single, people coming in from Europe to work in our hospitality and sector and other sectors, technology sector, and we swapped that for much increased immigration from Asia and Africa. So did Brexit increase immigration and not bring back control to the borders, as was famously promised? Well, that's been the result. I mean, I understand it wasn't the intention, but the result is we have higher levels of immigration. Tony Blair there talking about Brexit and immigration. And, I mean, he seems to be doing the round, Suzanne. I'm not quite sure um, why. He wants to suddenly uh, put himself up on the world stage again, but uh, I can only imagine it's because he wants to play a bigger part uh, in the governing of the of the country again. Yeah, there's been rumours, haven't there, for quite some time that he's been a kind of Machiavellian character behind the scenes. Mm the Labour Party ahead of the election, what they should do and how they should do it. And now he's clearly coming to the forefront again. I mean, personally, Mike, I think this man has got the most awful, awful cheek. When you look at what he did and the harm that he and Alistair Campbell did to the world by invading Iraq after yeah. Alistair Campbell's dodgy dossier, uh, the consequences of that, you know, not just millions killed, but the growth of Islamic State, a much more violent and unstable world. You'll think this man, if he had any shred of morality in his body, would have left the public stage many, many years yeah. ago and shut up, frankly. Um, how much time does he actually spend in this country anyway? I think that's, uh, that's up for debate. Um, but for him to blame Brexit for an increase in immigration, again, is an absolutely staggering statement to make. What planet is he on? Seriously? Um, Blair was the one who increased immigration fivefold during his term in office, quite deliberately. There was a very famous comment by his former speechwriter, Andrew Nether, who said that Labour wanted to in increase immigration to rub the nose of the right in diversity. Yes. It was deliberate strategy to change the look and feel of our entire nat nation and make it a much more multi-ethnic society. He opened the doors to 74 million people in the EU in 2004 when uh, 10 new member states signed up and he allowed them to have freedom of movement to Britain right from the word go, which he didn't have to. Uh, and now he's got the cheek to say, oh, immigration has caused problems. It's put strain on society. Really, Tony Blair? Really? I mean, it's, it is just a staggering right. lack of awareness and, frankly, a kick in the teeth to people in this country who right now are suffering from a cost of living crisis, desperate for a job, uh, all because of failed government policy, his failed government policy, the previous failures of the Conservative government, uh, and he's trying to blame Brexit? Yeah. Sorry. I just know. doesn't... No, exactly right, because he got an awful lot wrong, didn't he? I remember um, I was living in Scotland, I think, at the time, when, when uh, it was only, I, I believe, Britain, Sweden and Ireland that actually opened the, the, the doors and said, you know, we can, we'll take as many people as want to come here. And every other European country said, no, 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 we'll have some quotas, thanks. We'll actually have some numbers which will be, you know, which will have a ceiling. And he said, I remember once uh, in an interview that there would be about 15,000 Polish people that would come here, um, and about a million came. You know, I mean, I've never heard, I think, of, of, of an estimate being so badly out. I mean, he would say, I suppose, in his defence, that they've deported more people um, than we are currently deporting, but that seems to me to be more of a failure of our government more, more recently than, than, than anything else. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very sad, actually, because, of course, one of the fundamental principles of the campaign to leave the European Union was that we would be able to control our own borders, uh, keep control of the money that we had and make our own laws. And it seems to me that uh, both the Labour, the Conservative, the Labour in opposition, Labour now, the Conservative government, all failed to deliver on that promise, which of course wasn't a promise by the government, it was a promise by the Leave campaign. Right. And it was a perfectly reasonable promise to make on the assumption that a government, a subsequent government, actually took advantage of the new freedoms that Brexit gave us. The problem is we've had a political class that have refused to take advantage of those new benefits. Mm. Um, I sometimes wonder in my kind of moments, <laughs> wandering down the road into conspiracy theory, whether it was a deliberate attempt not to take advantages uh, 
uh, those advantages so that we could one day perhaps potentially go back in. Uh, it's almost as though a certain group of people didn't want Brexit to be a success. Uh, they, they wanted it to fail. Uh, and so they did nothing to make it a success. Although, of course, you have to say we've also had COVID since then, yeah. COVID lockdowns, which, of course, did extreme damage to the economy. Um, and, and I think sometimes also the people who are very quick to blame Brexit for everything that oh, goes yeah. wrong forget that we basically shut our country down for three years as well. You cannot simply blame, blame Brexit for the things that go wrong. And for example, you look at other countries in the Eurozone, like Germany, mm. which is be increasingly, uh, I, I think, becoming um, a, a huge, it's increasingly falling into crisis economically. Yeah. You know, G GDP has flatlined since 2018, um, whereas here in the UK, we are back on the on, on, on a track now of growth. Uh, hopefully that will continue, notwithstanding Chancellor Rachel Reeves' uh, tax policies. Um, but manufacturing as well, Britain is, do, is doing better. You, Germany, for example, in the Eurozone are far, far worse on manufacturing yeah. than we It's too easy to blame Brexit. Look at the real issues here. Stop just finding a state scapegoat. And unfortunately, I think that's what a lot of people are trying to do. Yeah, absolutely right. Couldn't agree more. Suzanne Evans, thank you very much indeed, journalist and a politician.